Hello all, welcome to the new lecture of Integral Equations. Uh, in this lecture, we will discuss about the iterative methods for solving integral equations of second kind or uh, the method of successive approximations. In certain cases, the integral equation of second kind can be solved by a method of successive approximations. Uh, this, in this method, we will uh, consider some approximate solutions. We will obtain some approximate solutions by, uh, taking, uh, by uh, taking one initial approximation y0 of x and proceeding uh, like uh, substituting that value and uh, continuing uh, to obtain y1, y2 first approximation, second approximation like that. This is uh, the same as we done in um, the ordinary differential equation that is the Picard's iteration method. In that one we have first assumed the one initial approximation then uh, substituted that value in the uh, integral equation so uh, corresponding integral equation and then uh, we obtained the first uh, output as the first approximation y1 then substituting y1 in the respective place, we will get y2, the second approximation y2, like that. And we will check the conditions under which this will, this series of, um, this series will converge to a continuous function, which is the solution of the uh, integral equation. Actually, this method is applicable to both the Volterra type integral equation and uh, uh, Fredholm integral equation, especially of the second kind, that is uh, in the standard form alpha of x is equal to 1. But the uh, method of separable kernels, we were it was applicable only to Fredholm integral equations of second kind. But here, uh, this method, method of iterative, uh, iterative method or successive approximation method is applicable to both the equations. For uh, discussing the method, first we consider uh, without loss of generality a Fredholm integral equation of the second kind that is y of x plus y of x is equal to fx plus uh, lambda integral a to b k of x zeta y zeta d zeta. Where f and k are continuous functions. So the equation is a Fredholm integral equation, Fredholm non homogeneous, Fredholm differential integral equation of the second kind. Now let y not be the initial approximation of y under the uh, integral sign. Then uh, using 1, we get the next approximation in the form y1 of x. So, uh, in order to get the first approximation, we substitute uh, y0 of theta instead of y of theta in the uh, integral under the integral sign. That is, uh, the second, uh, the next approximation is obtained in the form y1 of x is equal to f of x plus lambda integral a to b k of x theta into y0 of theta d theta. y0 of theta means the initial approximation call it as equation number 2. Now by substituting this approximation into the RHS of uh, equation number 1, uh, we get the next approximation y2 as y2 of x is equal to fx plus lambda integral a to b k of x theta y1 of theta d theta. And continue this process in such a way that the successive approximations are determined by the formula. So, when we uh, continue this process, we can um, uh, write the nth approximation y n of x is equal to f x plus lambda integral a to b k of x theta uh, y n minus 1 of theta d theta. Put it as equation number 3. Uh, now the same, um, so like this we can find all the approximations and if uh, this series converge, uh, actually we will not get in the correct uh, real solution through this method even though we, we can, it is possible to find the approximate solution by the successive approximation method 
and we can see that this will give an um, actual solution if uh, the series converges that we will discuss later. So this method, the same method is applicable to uh, the Volterra type integral equations also. So next we try to determine under what conditions this appro successive approximations actually tend toward a continuous solution of one. Since we need a continuous solution for the integral equation, uh, we will try uh, to determine under the what conditions this uh, successive approximation method converge to uh, or this series of series of solutions y1, y2, etc. approximate solutions would converge to a continuous function of uh, equation 1. For that, first we, uh, first we introduce an operator, integral operator called kappa, the same thing that we have done in the case of ordinary differential equations. That is the, in the Picard's iteration method. So here we, uh, this, uh, we introduce the integral operator kappa. So without loss of generality for in the sake of doing the integration, we assume that B, the upper limit B is greater than A. B is greater than A. And let kappa of f of x is defined as kappa of f of x is equal to integral a to b k of x theta f of theta d theta. K of a, f of k f of x kappa of f of x is equal to integral a to b k of x theta f of theta d theta. Now uh, the equation uh, one that is the integral equation y of x equal to fx plus lambda integral a to b k of x theta y theta d theta. So here instead of integral a to b k of x theta y theta d theta we can represent it as kappa of y of x. So the equation 1 can be written as y of x is equal to fx plus lambda into kappa y of x. Then in equation number 2, we get the first approximation. So using kappa, we can write the uh, first approximation. Y1 of x is equal to fx plus lambda uh, integral a to b k of x theta y0 of theta d theta. So this becomes uh, kappa of y0 of x. So instead of this integral, we can write it as uh, using the integral operator kappa. We can write the equation as y1 of x, first approximation y1 of x is equal to fx plus lambda into kappa of y0 of x. Then uh, similarly y2 of x, second approximation will be f of x plus uh, lambda k into y1 of x. And uh, but we have written y1 using kappa as a book. So, uh, substituting that value instead of y1, we have y2 of x is equal to fx plus lambda kappa of fx plus lambda into kappa of y0 of x. That is y2 of x is equal to fx plus lambda into kappa f of x plus lambda into lambda, this will be lambda square, kappa of, kappa of y0 of x, that is kappa square of y0 of x. And similarly, we can write uh, y3. So, from uh, looking at y2 thoroughly or closely, we can write y3 of x. So, y3 of x will be fx plus lambda kappa of f of x plus lambda square kappa square of fx plus lambda last term will be lambda cube kappa, kappa cube of y0 of x. So in each of the approximations y1, y2 and y3 we can see that the last term will be if it is y3 the last term will be lambda cube into kappa cube of y0 of x and uh, after that we have a 
series form fx plus lambda into kappa of x fx plus lambda square kappa square fx first two terms containing f of x then the third term first three terms containing f of x and the last term is uh, containing the initial approximation y not of x so uh, observing all this y1 y2 and y3 we can have uh, the general y n in general y n of x as lambda f of x plus lambda kappa of f x plus lambda square kappa square f x plus etc other term just before the last term will be lambda raised to n minus 1 kappa raised to n minus 1 of f x plus the last term we call it as r n of x capital r suffix n of x where r n of x is lambda raised to n kappa raised to n of y naught of x now as n tends to infinity uh, we can have uh, this y n of x converges to y of x the continuous solution y of x if uh, r n of x converges to 0 so if r n of x converges to 0 then from the equation of y n of x we have it will becomes uh, y of x is equal to f x plus summation k equal to 1 to infinity lambda a raised to k a kappa raised to k of f of x or any summation n equal to 1 to infinity lambda raised to n kappa raised to n of f of x so this is this will be the continuous solution if uh, rn becomes 0 as n tends to infinity this equation number 5 now uh, so this will be the continuous solution form if rn of x converges to 0 as n tends to infinity now it remains to determine the conditions uh, under which the expression rn of x tends to 0 and under which the formal series series for uh, The formal series 5 converges and represents a continuous solution of 1. So now this uh, this is our um, uh, this this we want to determine that means we need to put that under what conditions or we need to determine under what conditions the Rn of x uh, converges to 0 and the solution the formal series is convergent and hence gives a, a continuous solution of the integral equation Fredholm integral equation of the second kind that is equation number 1 now uh, So this we will discuss in the uh, next lecture. Now let's stop here. Thank you. Thank you all.